Available now. Link below. And now an audacious claim that could reshape the narrative surrounding one of the most controversial figures in American politics today. Hunter Biden steps into the lion's den, Capitol Hill ready to combat the storm of accusations with a forceful declaration of innocence. But as the doors close behind him, do his words carry the weight of truth or are they a smokescreen? for more lies. Well, this isn't just another day in the saga of political scandal. This could be a turning point in the tale of intrigue, deceit, and a family's multi-million dollar grift. Stay with us as we uncover the layers of Hunter Biden's closed-door deposition, dissect his explosive statements against House Republicans, and gauge the aftershocks of the testimony. You don't want to miss the final thought on why this matters to every American, so stick around for this special report. This is one for the books. Now, folks, before we dive into this whirlwind of a story, a crucial point to reflect on, the truth can sometimes be as elusive as a clear day in a storm. Our political arena. It's in turmoil, much like a magician's act full of misdirection and illusions. The very fabric of our republic is being tested. Principles question. In these uncertain times, akin to a family using their name for murky business deals under the cover of political influence, we need to be prepared for the unexpected, and that's why I urge you to visit preparewithgary.com. You'll get a $60 off a four-week food emergency kit from My Patriot Supply, so when chaos is the currency and facts are mired in fiction, being prepared is your truth. This isn't just any food kit. It's your assurance against the unpredictability that envelopes us. Sealed to last 25 years and providing over 2,000 calories daily, it's your standing ground. So head over to preparewithgary.com and let's stand prepared for whatever show this political circus has in store. Order now for peace of mind. Don't let the chaos catch you unprepared. Now, as Hunter Biden ascends the steps of Capitol Hill, the air was thick with anticipation and skepticism, and there amidst the hollowed halls of Congress, he was there to give his deposition a testimony that promised to be as controversial as the man himself. Officially, it was part of the ongoing Republican impeachment inquiry against President Joe Biden. Unofficially, it was the latest episode in the multi-year, multi-million dollar saga that has entangled the Biden family in accusations of corruption, influence peddling, and outright lies. Hunter's claim was as bold as it was simple. I did not involve my father in my business. The statement that he presented with an air of defiance that seemed to dare his critics to prove him wrong. But for those who've been following the threads of the story, skepticism isn't just warranted, it's obligatory. After all, Hunter Biden is no stranger to controversy, nor is he unfamiliar with the art of crafting careful statements that skirt the borders of truth. Watch. Broadcast. Professor Turley, you go first. How high are the stakes today, as Kerry was just describing? Well, first, I want to note that makes me Ollie. Just make sure McCarthy knows that. <laughs> uh, but um, it, it's, it, it's, it is, uh, this is the moment of truth that a lot of people have been waiting for. You know, this is not a place where you can easily spin. If you are inaccurate, if you're untruthful, uh, you can end up with federal charges and a brand new uh, statute of limitations running. Uh, and he has a really precarious uh, road ahead. I don't know what some of his answers will be. We expect that he's going to fall back on the fact that he was an addict, that his memory is not great. But the House committee has money transfers and emails that clearly show influence peddling going on. And he's going to have to answer some of those questions, uh, I think, at the outset. They're likely to drill down on what we all pretty much know, that President Biden lied when he said that he did not know anything about his son's dealings. Uh, Hunter Biden himself contradicted that earlier. And while he might try to spin it a bit, I think he's probably going to have to contradict his father. Andy, your expectations for today. Well, I think it's important to remember that this is a proceeding that's more like a grand jury than a dramatic trial in front of a jury and in public. So for an investigator, if he's willing to talk, I think one of the first things I would poke around to find out is if he's actually willing to talk. I would actually Mr. Biden, do you still uh, come to right. Publicly? I, I would I would be prepared to ask him a bunch of questions. I don't think he'd answer about the two indictments that go to the heart of those, because I think part of the objective that the Republicans have had with respect to this is to kind of do a, uh, pretty much what the January 6th committee did, which is bring people in who were in criminal peril, get them to take the Fifth Amendment, and then, even though you wouldn't be allowed to do this in regular criminal proceedings, argue from that that uh, people have engaged in 
criminal behavior. So I poke around to see if he's actually willing to testify. I think part of the reason he's resisted this so long is he doesn't want to take the fifth. But if he's willing to talk, um, then it's not a time to be dramatic. It's a time to walk him through documents. And that's the kind of tedious but important part of any investigation. And the advantage of this forum compared to a public congressional hearing is you get people who are actually competent at doing. Now, indeed, as Hunter asserted his innocence and disassociated his father from his complex web of international business deals, many found it hard to take the bait. Not least because this wasn't the first time Hunter has made such claims, which increasingly appeared to be at odds with the evidence laid out before the public. Despite his denials, there were uncomfortable shadows cast by his association with Ukrainian gas company Burisma, his bewildering financial transactions, and the testimony of people like Devin Archer, Hunter's longtime friend and business associate. Archer's testimony before the House Oversight Committee over the summer did little to dispel the growing cloud of suspicion. His account painted a picture of a family leveraging its name for political reach and for financial gain, with Hunter at the apex of these dealings. When Joe Biden was vice president, Hunter's dinners with foreign business associates attended in person or via speakerphone by Joe Biden more than 20 times seemed less like casual meetings and more like influence exhibitions. Archer's assertion that Burisma would have gone out of business if the brand had not been attached to it is particularly damning, hinting at a level of involvement from Joe Biden that transcends any ordinary paternal support. If that wasn't enough to raise eyebrows, Hunter's financial entanglements sprawl further, touching banks in China and raising questions about direct payments made to Joe Biden by Owasco, Hunter Biden's investment vehicle. It's a convoluted tale of money, power, and alleged deceit that doesn't just hint at corruption, but shines a spotlight on it. Yet Hunter stood before Congress, weaving a narrative of innocence and victimhood, attempting to deflect and defuse the charges laid before him. His testimony, wrapped in the veneer of defiance, couldn't obscure the realities hinted at by bank statements, emails, and the testimony of associates. It's a story that contradicts itself with every twist and turn, suggesting that Hunter's businesses weren't just about profit, but about power and influence at the highest levels. As Matt Gates walked out of the deposition, his reaction was one of disbelief, a sentiment likely shared by many. The explanation Hunter provided for his position on the board of Burisma to counter Russian aggression was met with incredulity. Watch. I'd say that there were a number of interesting moments, but perhaps none more interesting than when Hunter Biden told us that he uh, joined the Burisma board to counter Russian aggression. I, I hadn't heard that one before, that thank goodness we had Hunter Biden on the Burisma board uh, because that was uh, central to his strategy to stand up to Vladimir Putin. Has so, he taken the fifth at all? No, he's, has, answer, he's, he's, he's been responsive to questions. Has yes. he told you exactly what value he brought to any of these wars, any of these companies yet? Have you guys asked him that? Yeah, we've asked those questions, and there is, there is an illusory value. It is a mirage to believe that Hunter Biden was engaged in international business. This was uh, a bribe masquerading as an international business transaction. Nothing more, nothing less. Can we just quickly ask you, do you still feel the impeachment inquiry is heading in a direction where you actually be able to vote on articles of impeachment? Well, here we're asking questions about these corrupt business practices. Uh, I'm, not really, I'm not really framing that through the lens of next steps. I'm just trying to get the facts. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I, I have to say, I thought it was a pretty strange. I thought it was a pretty strange uh, statement. Either perhaps it jumps off the page when he says it in his own words. Do you think has he said anything that specifically to the president? Have you seen evidence that the president was involved in those business dealings? I believe that you can actually bribe someone by paying their family members. Like I, I don't get this construct that unless Joe Biden himself received cash that he somehow wasn't involved in the bribery operation. Joe Biden was doing the bidding of Burisma. He was doing the bidding of Chinese communists, and his family was getting enriched as a consequence. To me, that's a pretty strong case for bribery. Really okay, to sarcasm and thanking Hunter for his pivotal role in geopolitics underscores the absurdity of the situation. The deposition, instead of clarifying the air, only muddied it further, presenting a narrative so implausible that it would have been laughable if it wasn't so serious. While Hunter accuses Republicans of engaging in MAGA-motivated conspiracies against him and his father, the reality is that 
The questions surrounding the Biden family's business dealings aren't born from partisan vendettas. They're rooted in a quest for transparency and accountability. As the layers of this sordid tale continue to be peeled back, the American people are left grappling with the implications of what appears to be a brazen disregard for ethical boundaries and the potential exploitation of political power for personal gain. If you got value from this report, tap subscribe. My final thought is next. The grand tapestry of American governance and its cherished institutions, the Hunter Biden saga, is more than a mere scandal. It serves as a stark lesson in accountability or the lack thereof. When those in proximity to the pinnacle of power seem to sidestep the rules that govern mere mortals, a shadow is cast not just on an individual or family, but on the republic itself. The story matters not for the political points it may score in the relentless tug of war between parties, but for the principles it challenges at the heart of our republic. It underscores the imperative of unyielding oversight in the public's demand to de public's right to demand integrity from its leaders and their kin. As this chapter unfolds, let us not forget in the end the truth, however elusive, must be the victor. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. Now keep up your quest for truth with this next news report. And if you found our channel enlightening, join the millions who agree with you. Tap subscribe. Thank you for watching the Next News Network.